Now, you've probably heard this phrase, flattening the curve, when it comes to this pandemic, but what does that mean in practice? Let me show you a few charts that kind of explain it, uh, because the key thing here is just looking at the rates at how fast people are dying around the world. Different countries facing different forms of crises at the moment. And you get a sense of this looking at this chart. It measures how fast uh, the number of people here in, in various different countries are, are dying. So the steeper the curve, the more people are dying more quickly, and the flatter the curve, uh, the less quickly they are dying. So you can see South Korea over there, they have been seen as having managed this disease far better than many countries in Europe, and almost all of Europe, including, it should be said, Germany and Sweden, are in the pack uh, there. And have a look at the UK. So we've just had confirmed 3,605 deaths uh, in the UK. But when you just look at a few of these lines, let's have a look at the kind of extremes here. So we'll take uh, South Korea at the bottom, and then you've got Spain and Italy, which are seen as being the epicenters of this disease. Uh, at the moment. Let's have a look at where the UK and the US uh, sit within this. You can see the UK and the US, this is the first 10 days after they passed 100 deaths. So the first 10 days, both of those lines were actually below Italy and Spain's lines. It looked like they were flatter than, uh, than those lines, so that was potentially an encouraging source of news. But it's what's happened more recently uh, that is causing concern here in the UK and indeed in the US, because both the UK line and the US lines are getting steeper, whereas you can see uh, those lines for Spain and Italy are actually getting flatter. And the upshot of this is the UK may well overtake Italy, the US may overtake Spain to become the biggest epicentre of COVID-19 in terms of the severity, the speed at which uh, it is killing people. And right now the UK, if it continues in its current trajectory, could well have 10,000 deaths in total by next week. That's how serious this is. That's why it matters to try and flatten those curves. And the reality, I'm afraid, is what we're seeing on this chart is in a way us looking through the rear view mirror, because a lot of these people who have died in the last few days will have contracted the disease some weeks ago. So there are big question marks over how comparable these numbers are. But there is another question. Is it that they are overstating the number of people who are dying, or is it that they are understating it? And there's, if you look at some of the figures, as we have done, you get a, a particular picture. So this shows you those official numbers. So it's the equivalent of those official numbers. It's not a logarithmic chart, it's not a growth chart, it's an absolute one, so it's a slightly different shape. But that's the number of people, uh, number of deaths that have been announced. Now let's have a look at when those people actually died. And it is a slightly different picture. You can see the date of death curve is before they are announced. In other words, we may now be facing a more severe crisis, but we'll only hear about it in potentially a few days or indeed a week or so's time. That is concerning. And so too is the fact that we don't really have a comprehensive picture of how many people are dying in total. Uh, this shows you the number of people who have died of all causes in the UK, that blue area there, of all causes in the UK, each week since the start of the year. And you can see the dotted line is the average of how many people tend to die in each week. And so far, it doesn't look like the UK's kind of number of deaths is actually getting above the average. So that's quite encouraging. And in Italy and Spain, this blue area, their equivalent of the blue area, is going far above the average. So you're having excess deaths, uh, as they cause it, call it. But here's, here's the concern. These numbers are slightly out of date. So we don't get them uh, until a lag of two weeks or so. So we'll be keeping a close eye on this chart. Some people fear that that excess, excess death line could well rise above the average uh, over the course of the next few weeks. Others say uh, we have been overcounting those COVID-19 deaths. We will have to keep a close eye on it because there are lots of question marks about the data, but lots of concerns about what's happening and lots of kind of very clear clarity, I think, uh, from many people that we re really need to try to flatten those curves as quickly as possible.